Praise God. Praise God. I will be turning to John chapter 10 and reading three verses there, 7 through 10. I do want to say I had tremendous conversations with some of you here and some of you that are not here. I do want to mention and say uh, uh, we are desperately praying for Sister Loretta, her son Randy. We want to see God do something amazing there. We love Sister Loretta, and she is a part of us. Amen. Amen. And we can't wait for the day for her to be able to see us again and visit the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciate her. Appreciate Sister Deanna Cochran. Amen. We miss Sister Joy this morning. So many things. So many people got so many reasons, and some are reasons, and some are excuses for not being in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're at verse 7 of John chapter 10, Jesus is speaking here. And he says something. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And in the midst of this, this beautiful, tremendous relationship, an opportunity, an open door to walk with the Lord, a warning is given about an enemy. A warning is given about the tactics and the desires that the enemy, Satan, has for you. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. Jesus saying, make no mistake about it, I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. But there's a thief, there's a liar, there's a robber. There's someone that wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. You know, Satan doesn't come to us as an arch enemy. He can't fool God, but he's convinced he can fool us. So he doesn't come. As, he doesn't walk in and, I'm Satan and I'm your enemy. He doesn't announce. He's not going to show up in a funny, tight, ridiculous red suit and a pitchfork and horns. Are you understanding? Pointy tail. He's not going to show up like that in your life. He's going to come disguised. In fact, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, he can transform himself into an angel of light. In other words, he'd rather come to you looking like Mother Teresa than Charles Manson. He'll come into your life looking like the thing you love and adore, not the thing you hate. He's not going to meet you out in the parking lot after church today, try to get you on a drug you've never even had a desire to be addicted to. He will try to get you with something he knows you like. <laughs> so if we know that the arch enemy of God operates by deceit and disguise, we need to understand that his underlings is going to be no different. Deceit and trickery. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Second Corinthians, Paul reminds us in the Corinthians, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Have you slipped into a coma type state of ignorance? Have we? Have we allowed the enemy to slip in Steal, kill, destroy. Has he gotten that advantage because we've neglected to stay mindful of his deceit? Jesus, let's lay our Bibles down. Let's go before the Lord. Let's ask the Lord to open our hearts and our minds and our eyes 
spiritual eyes, that we spiritually wake up today. Jesus, we need you. God, we can do nothing without you. I ask, Lord, for your help today. I'm but dust, I'm but clay, I'm just a man, God. I ask for your unction, your anointing, your Holy Ghost to move, Lord, that these words could come across this sacred desk, God, to open eyes, God, not only physically, but spiritually, to heal hearts and minds, not just emotionally, but spiritually, God, but there could be a great awakening, Lord, and an inspiration of knowledge, and that we're not ignorant, that we got an enemy that's a thief, that's a liar, that's stealing and deceitful. Help us, Lord, that the enemy not get an advantage over us. Hallelujah. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Oh, let's give him a hand praise. Someone say that name right now. Call on that name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the holiday season is a time for surprises. I laughed at my absolutely wonderful wife and daughter is one of these past evenings prior to Christmas. All of a sudden they come in yelling, stay where you are. Don't come out. And I, I can hear the struggle, <laughs> Erica, just all the noises that come with them trying to. I don't know, move something bigger than them. And I'm like, okay. And uh, next thing I know, there's a pretty large package in the living room. And rather than wrapping it, they just covered it with a big sheet, which is, which is right down my alley. I'd rather put more money into your gift than buy wrapping paper and bows. Sorry. I, I guess I'm not good at getting in touch with my feminine side, sister. I try. And uh, they were like, well, you're not going to peek at it. I'm not, I won't even touch it. No big deal. I, I, you know, I, unlike some of you guys, and especially Erica, I'm not going to open things on Christmas Eve. I just, I don't do that. Some of y'all cheat. I don't believe in cheating, so. <laughs> my parents never let me celebrate my birthday a day early. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not going to cheat Jesus' birthday either. We like surprises. So it was wonderful to enjoy the surprise and pull the sheet off the secret. Christmas comes with surprises. Surprise visits. Surprise gifts. Just to mention a few of the surprises we get at Christmas. But a few years ago, a Pennsylvania family got the biggest surprise they could imagine when they found out during Christmas they had a stranger living in their attic. Afterwards, the police said a 21-year-old man by the name of Stanley Carter had been living with Stacy Ferrance and her three children. He had secretly been eating their food stealing their cash, taking Christmas presents, and even wearing their clothes. At first, the Ferrance family was tipped off that something was, was wrong when things started to disappear. And when I think about that, I can imagine as to blame one another, what'd you do with my pet? You got my earbuds? Well, somebody does. And I can imagine as he chuckled in the attic, as he was able to listen to the music he wanted or whatever he wanted on someone else's stuff while causing division in the house. Finally, after hearing some noises and ignoring them and sweeping them under the rug, they, they, they started to realize, okay, there's something going on. What he would do would they would leave the house as he would sneak through the opening that went from the attic into the closet and come out. What happened was, is he was staying at the neighbors in the duplex next door. 
and had an altercation, and they were they told him he had to leave. And they all, I guess, apparently left. He was there, left to leave, and they came home, and he was gone. What he had done was taken what little he had and slipped into the attic and was coming back in the houses through the, the doors, through the attic accesses in the closet. In the beginning, he just started taking little things. He was very weary of being caught, being found out, and so he just took just enough food and little things that could be unnoticed. And as time went by, he started getting more and more bold and remained undetected. So he became aggressive and helped himself to more food and more clothing items, and he continued doing this. And for the most part, he was unnoticed. Although in retrospect, they realized the sounds and the bumps and the stuff wasn't somebody else in the house. They realized that they had been given the clues and the tells that something wasn't quite copacetic. And he got away with it for a while. The family knew things were missing, and, and when they finally realized after arguing with one another that, okay, may, 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 maybe a previous tenant has a set of keys and they're coming in while we're gone. And so they basically just kind of swept the small theft and losses under the rug and went about living. However, Christmas Day came, and Stanley Carter had overstepped himself. While the family was out, he stole a decent amount of cash, a brand new laptop computer, and an iPod. And finally, the family was like, wait a minute, we're calling the police, this is too much. So the police came and looked around and left, and they took a report. And then the next day, a shocking, revelatory clue was found. They discovered unequatable footsteps, footprints going into the closet that headed into the attic. They immediately called the police and they came and brought a police dog and soon <laughs> they were able to flush Stanley Carter out of his hiding place. Only then, when the thief had been caught, the reality of what had been going on for some time started to make sense and sink in. A thief was in the house. When they finally brought Stanley down from the attic, instantly the family members recognized their clothing. Other missing items tennis shoes that he was wearing. The police searched the attic. They found all the missing items. And during the search, they found something very interesting. Something that wasn't there. In fact, the only thing really that was Stanley's. They found an extremely meticulously made out list. On a piece of paper, which he blazingly, whatever term you want to use, titled Stanley's Christmas List. They found a list that he had listed everything that he had stolen from them to give himself for Christmas. <laughs> you got a thief making a list of things of yours that he wants. <laughs> Our text, Jesus describes Satan as a thief that comes to steal, that comes to kill and destroy. And I, I want to warn you that if you're not careful, if you're not diligent, you can easily allow an uninvited guest to sneak in and take up residence in your life. Long before you and I grace this terra firma with our footsteps and our first cries, there's an enemy that's been sneaking around in and out of people's lives and in and out of people's homes, stealing from them. 
And I want to remind you today, there is a thief that likes to worm his way into your life unnoticed. He won't come as a devil saying, I come for your daughter, Chuck. No, he will sneak into your life with the very thing that you think you love, with the very things you think you like. He ain't going to come as Charles Manson. He'll come like Mother Teresa. to live at your house at your expense and your cost. At first, it just seems like minor nuisances. At first, it's just little things that we begin to tolerate, that we allow to be in our homes. And at first, he just pilfers small things. And it's, it's a slow process because he wants you to grow accustomed to losing some things. He works craftily and carefully, almost imperceptible, and so much so, fixed it. Well, maybe I just misplaced it. He'll start with your devotion and dedication. He'll sneak in and rob you of your prayer life. Steal your Bible study. But it's okay, because your enemy has convinced you misplaced it, no big deal. Not reading from the Bible or praying doesn't carry a lot of instant cash value, so we can do without it. You don't call the police when that goes missing. There's no alarms that go off when you can go weeks without prayer and Months without reading the Bible for yourself. No alarms go off. No one's calling the police. Ah, well, it's just, it's normal to lose things like that. You see, your enemy thrives on the flesh. And in order for him to survive hitchhiking into your life, he wants to take the spiritual things from you and replace them with carnal things. That's right. He wants the spiritual things because he, that's what he thrives on, his Christmas bandit would be forced to move on and out of your life if you refused to buy into the carnal and you stayed spiritual. <laughs> Many times we suffer in our homes, in our lives, when we allow the so-called little things like prayer and faithfulness and joy to be stolen. Mm -hmm. You know, David was tested to a degree in this manner. Well, what's the big deal if a lion comes and grabs one sheep out of the flock? Why would I risk my life for that? Some of you have said it. Well, what if my kids aren't really in the truth? What if they're not faithful? Well, what if my wife really don't buy in? Or what if my husband, what if my spouse, well, that's not a big deal. David, what's the big deal if one sheep's taken, you still got? You know what happens when you allow someone to take one thing? They're going to come back for more. So when he refused to allow the lion, spiritually speaking, the enemy said, well, okay, well, let's send a bear. Let's, let, let, let's send something else in a different. Because when you get to that place that you don't allow anything to be lost, no matter what's coming to take it, you send the enemy a message, I, I can't steal here. This part, you see, you have to understand, David's ascension to the throne, which was God realized, He's not going to let one sheep be taken. See, see, when it comes to the church and it comes to the things of God, when you become a person that we don't want to lose anybody. We're going to love every. I'm going to tell the truth. Flat. I'd rather hurt them with the truth than love them with a lie. That's what disqualifies people from leadership and kingship. When you start bartering 
like it's a financial issue instead of a spiritual issue. The true test of Christianity is when you value everything, not just the big things, the little things as well. Because when he catches compromise, he's going to stick around. They didn't mind that that went missing. He'll hang out because you begin to be okay with things going missing. You have to understand that the availability of the things that would sustain him were all it took to keep Stanley Carter around. If there was no food available, if there were no things available, if there was no way to sustain, he'd had to leave the premises. That's why you don't feed the bears at a national park. That's why you don't feed a stray cat at your house because they're not only going to want more, they're going to stick around. And they're dangerous. You don't, you don't want to feed that ridiculous, crazy, mangy looking cat because he's going to stick around and he's going to still sleep because he'll be out there all night. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I'm talking about that, but metaphorically speaking, some of you allow some things that keep you up all night. Uh, you, you, you're not getting the rest that you need. You're not gonna, you don't have the peace that you should have. You're full of worry. Yeah, you got problems, but you no longer trust in God because that's been stolen from you. You sit here worry and wringing your hand. You can't worship. You can't pray. You can't fast. You don't believe because you're worried because you got a thief in your house. The squatter likes to stick around. And pretty soon he progresses to bigger and more valuable things. It's much the same way. Like the thief in your life. Thrives off the carnality. The carnal appetites of the flesh. But is starved by the things that nourish our spiritual. Man. The psalmist even listed the struggle in Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel. He's good to his people. Even as such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slips, for I was envious at the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, we all struggle with that. We all fight. Y'all, the, the shiny objects and the things and the stuff of this life become so big in our world and the things that God, well, I don't need to stand in worship, but I can spend all day doing this. I can exert myself physically for that. But man, I'm a little tired to lift my hands. I'm a little tired. And, and so we stand and run and go and do all week long for the things of this world. And we come and find our blessed assurance on our backsides in the house of God. What's going on? There's a thief in your house that's sneaking in and stealing your commitment. It's stealing your conviction. He's taking your joy. He's ripping you off of your hope, pilfering your praise, and heisting your worship. I know you think it's normal, and I know you think you've made the conscious decision, on your, but you don't realize uh, you've changed. Things are different because you've allowed a thief to allow you to grow custom him taking things from you. The psalmist goes on in verse 17 and he qualifies what saved him from that thinking and that thought life of always wanting more of the world and more of the things of this life and looking at the prosperity. He said, until I went to the sanctuary of God, get me in the presence of God. Then understood I therein. <laughs> Oh my God, he'd been ripped off from, he'd been stolen from, but thankfully the enemy hadn't got his faithfulness yet. Thankfully the enemy hadn't got the truth out of him that he needed to be at the house of God. Thank God he hadn't lost that yet. Thank God the enemy hadn't ripped away his understanding of get to the sanctuary. Let me get to the church. You can get beat up all week, but as long as you know, I got to get to the house of God. Get my mind right. Get my spirit right. Get my heart right. I can't let the devil steal my commitment. I can't let him. He, he is going to go after my joy. He's going to go after that. But you're not getting my commitment and faithfulness to the house of God. That's my place where I get my... 
Oh, that's where it all makes sense. Hebrews 10.25 is a more important scripture than you realize. We're warned about enemies stealing from us. And we're admonished in Hebrews 10 and verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of, look around as the manner of some is. What happened? Some have a manner of allowing the thief to steal the truth. And what we're doing right now is we're exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day of pro there ought to be something about anyone and everyone in here today. You need to be in the house of God because you might be slipping on Monday. You might fall on Tuesday, but come Wednesday, you'll get your mind right. You'll get your spirit right. You'll worship right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, you think it's your choice just to sit there stolen from you've been stolen from it's a sad day when so called child of God can give everything they got to the things and the problems and the troubles of this world and walk in the house of God and heard that song before heard that message before preached it myself sang it myself you've been stolen from it's gonna steal your faith in the word of God. He, he, he's going to steal your prayer. The things will disappear. Hallelujah. Because when those things start going, when prayer and Bible reading and faithfulness start to go missing, if you're not wise to what's going on and you're oblivious to its disappearance, the enemy's coming for other things. There's always evidence of his existence in your life. <laughs> spiritual pursuits become choked out by carnal desires go 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 read the, the parable of the soils daily devotions and prayer you hurry through them the performance is as far as it goes but his presence is not necessary you're busy and so Bible is replaced by a busy schedule it's amazing when we come in here how many can just sit instead of entertaining the presence of the Lord and they run home to be entertained mm -hmm. stealing your joy you want to know what's, you know what steals people's joy? Entertainment. We have never been a more entertained society than we are right now. Whether it's sitting in front of a TV or engulfed or enamored with hobbies and other pastimes. Things that help you pass the time. See, the world says pass the time. The Bible says redeem the time. There's a thief that's trying to steal from you. Get you bitter. Get you sideways. Get you. Let me just get here. Let him hurry up. I like it when he preaches short sermons. You've been stolen from. You've been ripped off from the greatest thing that God ever placed in the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the word of God, the presence of God, walking in relationship with it. It's been ripped from you. And you've traded an intimate walk with God. For the things and the trinkets and the fool's gold of this world. You see, our bodies are subject to what is called endorphin dumps. You saw it and witnessed it probably early Christmas morning from all the little ones in your life. They got an endorphin dump and they're running around and they're crazy and they're excited and they're ripping. And, they're like, oh, and then about three or four hours later, maybe after some good food, maybe not, they're just... <laughs> Falling asleep somewhere, wrapping paper in an empty box. Spiritually, many of us are going to find ourselves like that as adults. Uh, we get all caught up in the things this world. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not sin. I can afford it. I can do it. I... But you don't worry what you've traded it for. Because the thief moved around your house. And you think it's, ah, it's just, 
what's going on? You trade in a full life, a life that pleases God. A life that's full of anointing and the amazing angelic visitations and moves of his spirit. To just be involved where moth and rust corrupt, where fictitious characters dance across the screens, entertaining you for moments on a screen in your living room. And all that's going on, you start to lose without noticing your God-ordained calling and purpose. It gets stolen from you while you're entertained, seeking another endorphin dump. And what happens when you get into the presence of God after being engulfed with the things of the world? You start despising anything about God. You start despising the conflict. And pretty soon with the conflict, you, God's at fault for this. The church is what I don't like because it, it, it points out the conflict. What it's really doing, there's a thief in your house and you don't want to confront him. Oh, you don't want to be honest. You don't realize that the world is dictating to you. The program is programming you and making you, you think you're missing out because real life is on that screen when you look at that and all the beautiful people and all the money and all the fancy and the perfect screenshots and you look at your life with dirty dishes and empty boxes and arguments and issues and health problems and financial. Why isn't my life like that? Why not in three hours can't my life be wrapped up with a miracle? <laughs> you no longer go to God's word for standards. You no longer go to God's word for goals. You look to impress things in the natural and not the spiritual. You want to be impressive in the physical and not the supernatural. You no longer look to God. You just pacify that because you don't realize there's a thief that's been meandering around and taking things at will. And pretty soon, instead of God... There are companies selling stuff and CEOs and marketing gurus are now telling you and I what success looks like. You think the house and the cars and the money and the savings and what your name means is, is valuable. Because the world's telling you where value is. The world tells you what happiness is. The world tells you what kind of home you should have and what kind of life and car and clothes you should, what your spouse should look like. You got certain levels of finances and I got to live like the people in my favorite program. Come on, parents. You do your best for 15, 16 years, scraping and providing and doing but in a moment, you're feel, you're made to feel less inadequate and even maybe even like a failure when all of a sudden your teenager realizes you don't have a car like the neighbor. You don't have finances like that sitcom. You're not letting them run around like the kids of that family that doesn't go to church. And you're dissatisfied with everything. You and I are the same. Someone drives down the street with something you don't have or something you didn't get or you missed this deal or you had that opportunity and this job evaded you and that pretty soon. Where's God? Because you've been given a false measuring stick because during the night Satan came and took the word of God away and it no longer permeates how you should think and how you should feel and what you should pursue and pretty soon you got a false measure and you think if you got an abundance of stuff and you got abundance of accolades and people are patting you on the back and you're some great thing you don't realize so like the Bible says that you're poor, blind and naked and you're unhappy and you 
complain constantly. You're critical more of what goes on in the house of God than the rampant abuse of a thief in your house. Happiness is not a state to arrive at. Because then that requires you have to have something happen to be happy. Mm -hmm. See, that's why, well, mine's not in here, but if you've got a spouse in here, just take a look at them. They're not 100% of what you'd like to have. I'm pretty sure there's some arguments that wouldn't happen if, well, bless God, if she was 100%. I can't imagine if Sister Crow could cut loose and say of all my shortcomings. That's a long list. And pretty soon we find ourselves trading in something that's 80%. For the 20 we did, we're not getting. You'll criticize your life. You're mad at your home. Upset with your car. Upset with your spouse. Why can't you do more? Why can't you look like? Why can't? And pretty soon the enemy has come in and stole away virtue and stole away the word of God and stole away what you should be pursuing and what you should be desiring and cultivating your affection on the things above and not beneath. Pretty soon. Now you may think it's okay. But let me ask this question. How spiritual is your spouse? You may be okay with being less than you should be. But your compromise may cost your spouse their soul. It may cost your children. What you allow the thief to take ain't just stealing from you. It's stealing from your kids and your grandkids and all. Because once you allow something and you allow it till pretty soon, you're going to find it in your family's home and in your children's home and your children's home. And if you find it in your home, you're going to let it in the church. That's why you can come into the church and some people are excited and it's something like that. What happened? all oh, got an undeserved merit and favor of God. We should all be excited. There's been a thief let loose in your house, in your heart, in your head, and in your home. And you start despising the greatest thing we've ever been handed. Hallelujah, the joy of the Lord is still your strength. That's why the three Hebrews were able to turn around a nation. Three of them did it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't worry about what I've lost. I haven't lost God. I will not bow. They tried. Daniel didn't care. They were going to throw him in the lion's den. He wasn't going to compromise his prayer life. He wasn't going to compromise. The thief wasn't going to steal from him. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's how Joshua and Caleb made it to the promised land. They refused to allow those around them to be little, to criticize and dilute their commitment to God. You can't give place to the enemy in your house. Listen, we've exposed the thief. But how do we remove the thief? <laughs> Anybody realize there's some things stolen from you? Don't raise your hand, but promise me there's not a one person in here and had the thief running around in your house. Promise you, you, you may, may, maybe it's been so long since you got real spiritual that, you, that your eyes are blinded by your flesh by your attitude and by your opinions and it's no longer governed by the word of God. How do you remove the thief? First, you must discover there is a thief. And you must recognize, okay, he's in here. So, one way to tell that your life has become the host of a parasite that wants to steal from you and suck the life, spiritual life blood out of you and then slowly kill and destroy you. Not let's take your life, 
but destroy who you could have been, who you should have been, what you should be doing. Mm. It's when your spirit becomes star for the things of God, and yet you still continue to feed your flesh. You have those moments that you're going to turn around and Monday it's going to be different and it's not. You miss church, but not your TV show. You miss prayer, but not your friend's phone calls. You miss Bible reading, but not any meals. You miss giving, but you're still looking to get. spiritually being systematically stolen from. If when you look, take a good hard look at your life and you discover that the carnal desires have supplanted your spiritual desires. When you recognize what happened to me. I used Can I tell you what's going on when you want to recognize there's a thief in your life, that there's a squatter in your life, a parasite sucking the spiritual power? You used to sing. You used to pray. You used to preach. You used to witness. You used to, what happened? There's a thief in your house. There's a squatter squandering everything that God's given you. He's squandering it and he's taking it and he's stealing from you. And pretty soon you're a zombie just coming to church and going home and coming to church and going home and there's nothing going on. You, you, let me help you here. You used to be, you used to, you used to be more spiritual. You used to have more spiritual activity. You used to be used of God. You used to believe and pray. You were more involved and all of a sudden you realize, you know, that's all disappeared. I just show up and go home. There's a thief. There's a thief. I remember one time I, I was a young guy and uh, the friend at work had this little motorcycle. He was gonna sell it. He was gonna sell it, so I just bought it from him. I think like fifty bucks. I took it, and took it home, and busy, and had to get to the church. I was a youth leader at the time, going. So I just put it up by the house. When I got busy, I literally forgot about it. Forgot about it. Hop in my truck. It was a Saturday, fixing to go somewhere. And I go to back out and I look over and there's these two kids riding my motorcycle. Now listen, I, I wasn't upset until I saw someone else. Ha oh. I didn't know it was taken. I didn't realize. I, I didn't realize because, you know, it was nice to have and I was blessed and it was worth more than I paid. And man, God, thank you, Jesus, but I didn't treat it with, and so somebody just valued it more. The devil just wants to, and you'll not realize it's gone until you look up and someone else is doing what you should have been doing. You can't tell me Saul didn't sit back there and watch David kill the giant and do what he did. What happened, Saul? When you were little and young, oh. You better catch that thief in your life today. You better realize there's an intruder. Can I tell you something? He's easy to get rid of. <laughs> you want to know, you starve him out. The answer to this satanic invasion is simply to Nourish the things of the spirit and starve the flesh. Feed your faith and the thief will starve. Gorge yourself on the word of God. Throw yourself into prayer. Get back to those things that got you to that place. And restore and pour and get back to that seeking of his presence. 
every moment when you get into your car. Put on Christian music. Get rid of the carnal, sensual, worldly stuff that's stealing from you. I'm going to walk down this street and y'all better get a hold of your spirit. Lady God guy ain't going to usher you into the presence of God. Drake ain't going to usher you in to the spirit of God. Willie Nelson ain't going to get you right and will not usher in the presence of God. Oh, you better get an email on this. The reason you're okay with that is because if you've ushered them in, you've ushered a little bit of God out of your life. You got kingdoms being built in your home. Yeah, well, I like that. Oh, and if it's about what you like, how's it pleasing to God? See, there's a thief. He'll elevate some worldly, carnal, hell-bound thing in the world in your heart and your life. And it'll become, well, it's just who I am. See, the enemy stolen from you. Last I remembered, I was bought with a price. My life's not my own. I've been built and fearfully and wonderfully made and called to worship God. And all of a sudden, I find myself walking around bitter at the church and bitter at the word of God and bitter. And I'm going to do whatever I want. And, and the thief is stolen from you. And you're like that petulant teenage child that's mad at parents that have sacrificed for you all. And just because you get one no, you're ready to blow the whole thing up. Instead of the word of God, you start following the talking heads on the TV, the talking heads on the radio, just because they play a tune or a melody that you like. And so you start worshiping with them because the enemy is stealing from you. Can you imagine if I took any of those artists? Can you imagine if at song service Wednesday night, who's your favorite artist? Don't say it out loud. That I went ahead and said, you know what, praise team? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and bring some Merle Haggard up in here. Well, I'm proud to be an Okie from Nuskogee. A place where even squares can have a ball. Y'all laugh, well, I'll get one of your songs. Boston, Aerosmith, Puff Daddy, Tupac, two pack, one pack, three, I don't know. Can you imagine if I, some of you, our pastor lost his mind. What do you think you're doing? You can't lead this church. Well, I question some of you leading your homes. Don't you come in here barking and acting like you're some spiritual thing. You need to get an email. You got a thief in your house, a thief in your mind, and a thief in your heart. He's stolen your altar. He's stolen your walk with God. And you settled for carnality instead of spirituality. Devil, you lied to me long enough. You snuck around my dwelling place long enough. I'm going to get back to my prayer time. And I'm not going to put in a perfunctory five minutes. I want to get in his presence. I want to get. You ain't stealing from me no more. I want to get in his power. I want to be anointed again. I want the word to come alive again. I want to draw close to God. I don't want to just get by with an acquaintance relationship. Jude writes, look at Jude, listen, you're either tearing yourself down and allowing a thief to steal from you, or you're building up. There's only one way to build up spiritually, he says, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Yeah. What's a mocker? Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts? These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. 
having not the Spirit. Paul said, I, I'm glad I speak with tongues more than y'all. When's the last time you stirred up that gift? Heads of the house, when's the last time you made sure your spouse had stirred up that gift? How many of you are running on your spirit instead of his? How many are led of your spirit? There's a thief. I'm not come to expose you. I've come to expose a thief. We all got him trying to get into our homes and get into our heart and get into our heads and steal and kill and destroy. What's he goes on? He said, but ye, he's going to come as a thief. He's going to be this. He's going to do that. This is how he's going to get you. You're going to become sensual about the things. You want to know? <laughs> you want to know if you're spiritual? You got to have someone in your life that can tell you no. Uh-huh. No. Well, who are you to? Exactly. Either a thief is taken or the Lord's building. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy I'm sorry, but Lady Gaga ain't holy. That TV program ain't holy. That movie is not the word of God. I don't care what, who, how, whatever you like, but to build yourself up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. God, we still need an outpouring in the church. We need an outpouring in our homes. We need an outpouring in our heart. We need an outpouring. <laughs> you want to expose the enemy? Get the Holy Ghost back in. The thief can't stand the word of God. The thief can't stand the power of God. The thief will not stick around when God is in the house. Keep yourselves. Oh, that, that's, that's effort. Keep yourselves in. See, some people brag and they say, I love God. Those people never got the love for God. Well, here's a warning here. Keep yourself in the love of God. In other words, you're doing things to please him. The first place that the thief wants to is get you out of pleasing him and get you pleasing yourself. And then he's turning around and saying, I never knew you. And you don't realize you've been stolen from Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Because mark my words, if you don't run this thief off, he's going to steal the liberty. He's going to consider what was yours now his and you're now his territory. Paul warned the Ephesians about this. He said in Ephesians 4, 27, neither give place to the devil. That word place translated in the Greek is topos. Anybody know anything about maps? Anybody know anything about geography? Anybody? They're called what kind of maps? Well, maybe I'm the only one that topographical. That literally means, a topos means speck, spot in regards to occupancy. And that's where we get that word. The graphical is a region. You can't allow the devil to get a spot or a place in your life. So you let that song in. You let that music in. You let that thought in. You let that. You're evicting the Lord and you're allowing the thief in. Because the devil wants territory. And he, he's not going to come in like a devil and say, okay, a full out commitment right now. No, 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 no. Let me just get a little compromise here. Let, let this song and let this activity and let it move you. And you continually service after service are sitting in the house in the presence of God because the devil wants territory. And pretty soon, he just doesn't want the territory of your mind. He wants to get the territory of your heart and pretty soon to get the territory of your spirit because he'll use any means available to gain access. Maybe it's a social group, a hobby, an activity. Look at your spirituality. Be honest. Because that innocent thing is exactly what he'll use. Like a Trojan horse, he'll allow you to build it up in your life and bring it into your life. And the enemy will use it to gain access, to steal from you and take your life. That's what the Trojan horse in Greek mythology was. 
Uh huh. During the Trojan War, the Greeks used it to take over Troy. They built what looked like a great big idol. And like, yeah, they're celebrating our conviction that we won't compromise and we're going to fight. And so the enemy comes in subtly. Trojan horse. Something that steals your thoughts, steals your mind, steals your desire, steals the things of God, steals your prayers. And you just relegate this as church. And then pretty soon you get upset because my kids don't really are faithful to church. Maybe because they saw your compromise in other areas. You may be faithful, but you compromise with the rest of the week. Because after Satan establishes his presence, he begins to get bold about it. <laughs> He'll tiptoe at first. When he starts getting comfortable, he just kind of make a Christmas list of the things he wants to take from you. Mm -hmm. As Paul warned us, lest Satan should get advantage over us. For we are not ignorant of this stuff. If we're not ignorant, how do he get you listening to that? How do he get you watching that? How do he get you just moving on too quick to worry about prayer? There's a thief, and I got to catch this thief. He snuck in. He wants to take over. He's looking at all your Christian spiritual stuff, and he starts saying, okay, he's making a Christmas list. I got to get their joy. I got to get their peace. I got to get their conviction. I got to get them to compromise. The enemy wants you to devalue eternity and take salvation lightly. Question God in a conversation with the devil like Eve. Question his word and his motives. The enemy wants you distracted while he steals what's important. He does his best work once that light of joy has... You ever heard someone... Shh. Oh, we got church. Can't do that. Oh, man. You realize it's the first and a week of prayer and fasting is coming? Oh, do you, oh man. I got to read my Bible. I didn't read my Bible today. There's a thief been in your house. And what's funny, you turn around and if you had a pair of shoes, ladies, and went missing, you'd be tearing that house apart finding it. Some of you guys, you lose a dime and you're going to be fighting, fitting hard, mad. Okay with spiritual. There's a thief in the house. Oh, hallelujah. He does his best work. He, where there's no joy, he is blind the eyes of faith. Where there's no joy, he can turn sunrises and everything's a sunset. That's one of the first items he'll go after is joy. And he's got centuries of stealing experience. He's asking for it. He sneaks around begin to cultivate in you feelings of bitterness and distress in your life and everything's a problem. And they'll whisper in your spirit, you don't need to listen. You don't have time for your loving creator. He's insensitive to your needs. You don't need the church. You don't need to worship today. You worshiped a few years ago. You... Mm, you're like that teenager got mad at the parents because all of a sudden they got a no in their life and you just sit through church services. Oh, what's he going to preach today? I got one for you. How are you going to worship God today? Where's your praise? <coughs> Where's your walk with God right now? Where, 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 where? Hey, judge me. I'm fine. Judge my preaching. Judge my message. Judge it. Judge it. Fine, fine. Critique me. Check me. Make sure I'm not slipping. But let me help you. How's your prayer life? When's the last time you witnessed to somebody? When's the last time you loved someone bigger than yourself? When's the last time you've been faithful? When's the last? There's an enemy trying to steal from you. Diminish church. Diminish the walk. Get you thinking bad thoughts. Spiritually suicidal thoughts. Some of you are offended right now because I touched your lollipop, your little popsicle. Now, nah, trust me, that's a poison of the devil. How can you sit through worship and sit through preaching and sit through an altar call? I can tell you how. I can tell you. I can tell you how. You don't go. The fire's gone out. The joy of the Lord's been stolen. And an enemy walks freely. About 
your life. negative event in your life becomes big and old slewfoot just like he did in the garden a beautiful paradise they had everything they needed but what did the enemy do of all the hundreds of thousands of plants and shrubs and bushes and hedges and flowers and all the things they be given walking with the Lord and the of the day everything to be joyful about no stickers, no thorns no work, all the wonderful beautifulness of the garden of Eden to be thankful for and Satan walks in and says, that's all good but you're not allowed to have that all the blessings of God and you're bitter over one thing there's a thief that got you off track. There's a thief that got you, got into your head. He got into your heart. And Satan wants that one thing to become more important than everything you've been given. The plan of salvation. All the wondrous, glorious, amazing presence and power of God that's available to your life. And now you sit there embittered and in battle. There's a theft going on. There's a theft in your house. There's stealing going on. Stealing from you and stealing from your spouse and stealing from your children and stealing from the plan of God. Theft of the truth, theft of right thinking, theft of love, theft of relationships. The enemy shacks up in your attic and sneaks in and spoils your house. Satan wants you to question motives of God pointing out all the faults saying, well, if God's so great, why is that happening? That's why people have difficulty with this subject. Because sadly, what's going on in the world is coming to the church. Oh well, yeah. Especially in America because we're supposed to love people and use things, but today, even in the church, there's people that love things. Don't believe me? It's in the same way that children forget the years of nurture and care, provision and protection from a parent. That's saying no to one thing and it hurts their little feelings and they're willing to burn down the whole house. Well, bless God, if they're not gonna do it my way, I'm gonna... They're not gonna let me... If they... People will blow up a relationship with years of love but we're not getting one thing. Yeah. Yeah. My friends, joy is usually one of the first casualties in your life that goes. The intruder establishes that foothold in your heart and wants to rip away that joy to where you can't seem to find any joy in your Christian life. Oh, I just want to go home. I just like hanging around with them. There's no pressure. There's no. And to think that the Lord of glory in the opulence, the perfection of heaven decided, well, let me robe myself in them to make a way for them to wrap themselves up in me. And I'll come down to this dirty sinful place to walk with you. And yet we won't lay aside a little flesh to walk closer with him. I got rights. An enemy stole from you. And he sadly is. He's used the exact same tactic on you as the very first one in the garden. Because you think that one thing that you need to know is everything. Mm -hmm. He snuck in. He's stealing slowly everything he can. Don't be foolish like that family in Pennsylvania. That bump that 
you know someone's there, that sound, that little missing prayer, that, that, that devotion that, that you used to witness and outreach and hand out church cards. Now you don't even carry them. Now you don't even care. You're promoting you and your stuff and it's all about. And they don't even know you're a Christian. They don't even know you attend a church and you become okay with that. Because you're a citizen there instead of here. That family thought they were protected in their home. And they just accepted those little things. Disappearing is okay. But there was a thief in the house and there was something wrong. You can't merely brush it off. Because that thief was just getting started. You just can't brush off the fact that you're okay with being late in church. You just can't blow off the fact that when there's an altar call, ah, that you won't miss a meal with some friends. Oh, where's the joy? Where's my joy? Wait a minute. Brother Lulu, whenever I get down and I'm going through hell, you know what I do? I go back to that moment when I wanted the Holy Ghost. I go back to that moment when I'm at an altar and I felt the calling of the Lord as a minister hit me. And I remember, I remember exactly what I said. I remember exactly my declaration with my mouth because the only thing that's changed from there to here, God hasn't changed. The call hasn't changed. My mind and my heart have been susceptible to a thief and I'm like, wait a minute, you're busted. You're t- oh, no, 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 no. And I'm going to gorge myself on the word of God. And I'm going to gorge myself in prayer. And I'm going to throw myself in the word. And throw my, and let's say, you ain't going to have a place in here. I'm not listening to that. I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to put on preaching. I'm going to put on choir. I'm going to, oh, I'm not giving, but you ain't coming in here. Come on now. You better believe Satan targets your worship. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. But some of you have to understand your relationships die because you stop doing what you did to get the relationship. You stop buying flowers, sending little notes. Oh, yeah. Now they know. You don't know what they're thinking. Why is it that we live on the edge of less and still live in the maximums of more? How many love the showering of God's blessing? How many can stand? Man, God's bless me. I don't hurt your feelings, but I can't tell. comfortable with the enemy taking up residence in our heart and becoming less than we were. We get used to being far less spiritual. We have a less of a connection with God. We question his word and we wonder, and we, oh, this and that. And we grow in carnality. We grow in bitterness. And the enemy will give you every reason in the world just to sit there and not worship. He'll give you every reason not to praise and your flesh will agree. But inside there's a spirit saying, there's an enemy in here. And if you'll cut me loose, I'll run him out. And you'll get your joy back. You'll get your family back. Oh, the joy of the Lord is your, let God loose back in your life, in your spirit, in your home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time we snatch Satan's Christmas list out of his hand. I'm getting my stuff back. 
I'm getting my dreams, my hopes, my anointing back. I'm not going to let that greedy thief linger in my life. Tolerated him long enough. Tired of sitting on the sidelines. Allowing him to feel emboldened to walk in and out of my life. Powerless to pray when I got a sick loved one. Powerless to pray when I got to speak a word of wisdom. Powerless. And all I got to offer is a little horse sense or colloquialism instead of the word of God. Satan's not just satisfied being a thief. Understand, he still wants to kill and destroy. He won't stop with just robbing you. He wants to do more to you than that. He's not satisfied with just stealing from you. He's going to start taking your whole family. He's going to start taking, I don't care how much you give, how much you do. If you don't get, leave a legacy of the things of God, if you don't demonstrate and actually sow what it's like to be sold out to the things of God instead of this world, he won't just stop with you. He's going to walk into their house and into their heart and, into their, and you can shake your head. I can't believe they're doing that. Hey, listen, bud, you better get back restoring, get the thief out of your house. Don't be satisfied with being an empty, shallow shadow of what you once were. The enemy wants to crush you, destroy you, kill you. Just wants a little bit of access to your life. Not just to harm you. Oh, he's got bigger plans. His, his appetite won't be satisfied with hopes and dreams. He just wants to steal your faith. His desire is to drag your soul to hell and he wants to destroy you. He's subtle and he's sink, sneaky and he's treacherous. Genesis 3.1, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. someone around your baby oh I don't know what they're up to I don't anybody ever done that how do we not walk around our own home and wait a minute anybody walk around their house at night making sure all the doors and windows are locked am I the only one that still does that why why we do that for the natural thing I don't want no one to take this and I don't want to take my motorcycle and I don't want them to take my boat and I don't want them to take my car and I, why do why do we walk around our house and pick our family out so, so something's stolen out of you that you're not worshiping and praying. You're not shouting. There's something wrong with you. Ah, something's happened to your spirituality. There's something missing. You've been stolen from. You've been stolen from. If his gifts are without repentance, where'd it go? I like the fact that, you know what, pal? You ain't got squatter's rights here. You don't have to be a permanent guest. Uh-huh. You have no laws here because of occupancy. Guess what? <laughs> even, even if his existence has become more prominent and you realize he's got more space in your life than you realize, the removal is still the same. You simply recognize he's there. And you starve him from your life. You cut off his life support. You put a little repentance and prayer and altar call and worship and praise and prayer and reading God's word. And you starve him out. What do you do? You call the spiritual police. You say, Jesus, here's the keys. Walk through every element of my life. Go in the attic. Go in the room. Go in the storm. Go Walk through Jesus. Get the police back in my life. And he gonna run that old slew foot right on it. Will you give him access? Will you return to who you once were? Do you want all the things back that are rightfully yours that have been stolen? Let's stand. David had everything stolen from him. Surrounded, brother Isaiah, with people where her, his his running mates, his buddies. Be careful becoming more familiar with the people of the world and not the presence of God. 
It's a sad day when you're walking arm in arm and hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder with people in the world and you come in and God seems foreign to you. There's something wrong when you know all the specs of this and that and you walk in and you're like, I don't even know if I... David promises, but they didn't look like they were the coming to pass. Promises and anointings and oil and lions and bears and giants. All, and all of a sudden he finds himself with a life that looks destroyed. And he's surrounded by people that were his friends. You talk about defeat. You talk about loss. You know the story of Ziklag. But do you realize the difference between losing it all? and being killed, and getting it all back, and being king, was a prayer meeting. <laughs> An altar. A devotion. A commitment. A faith. You see, the enemy, enemies wants to steal you. That way you get a sub situation like that, you're like, Psh. But David, a man after God's own heart, you can look at all his faults, but the problem is don't look at the faults. Look at, look at what he did. Jesus. Hey, Abathar. I've kind of neglected the priestly role. Give me the ephod. I need a little prayer. I mean, I need a little talk with Jesus. Let me get in the presence of almighty God. I want my stuff back. But do you realize he got it all back from a prayer meeting? When you finally get fed up and you finally turn to the Lord for help, quit trying to please everybody around you and start pleasing God. Quit trying to please your own flesh. It will never be satisfied to start pleasing God. The thief has no choice be bound and removed from your life. I got to get the thief out of my life, out of my head, out of my spirit, out of my house, out of my attic, out of my head. Oh, I got to get the liar. The prodigal's problem was he was stolen from. Brother Bruce, he had everything. He just wasn't in charge. Here's our failure. Especially as men, we want control. That's all he wanted. He wanted control. God, I don't want you to have a say over. I want to do what I want to do, Dad. And he didn't realize that that control was the protection. It was the reassurance of an inheritance. And so the prodigal thinking dad was holding out the rock. I want control. I can do better. I don't need the words of my dad. I don't need the safety of his house. I don't need the church. Before it's all said and done, he'd walked away from his father. That relationship was stolen. Then all of a sudden, he wasted his substance. His substance was stolen. He finds himself working for a pig farmer. His self-esteem was pickpocketed right out of him. Feigning he wanted to eat pig's food. His health is robbed and his wealth has been ripped off. And in a pig pen he'd been stolen from. And he came to himself and realized there's been a thief in my I allowed a thief in my mind and in my heart. I allowed a thief to steal my altar and my, my loving relationship with God. I, I was more worried about pride and how I looked to everybody that I wouldn't go to an altar. And he came to himself. He came to himself. He realized there's a thief. Oh, you, there's a thief. You know, much like the psalmist, the prodigal came to himself. Now he'd already slipped, so he's the other side of what the psalmist was. For those of you that have slipped and you are not where you should be from 
with God. And you've allowed the things, the substance and everything you could have been, would have been and should have been to be taken. Oh, how many of us have had the Father's house diminished in your head? Uh, oh, it's just church. Uh, oh, it's just, ah, oh, there's a... Get me to dad's house. Get me back to the place where I get my perspective right, my priorities right, my life right. I don't want control. God, you have control. I keep messing up and giving place to an enemy. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I failed my dad miserably. Miserably. We had just moved over from England. We had just been here a short time, and I got mixed up with the wrong crowd. And, you know, I, I did something to completely embarrass my dad, my mom. One of my biggest regrets, Brother Bruce, is I in my faults and failures, my dad never laid down his integrity. And after the courts were done with me and after all that chunk was done with me, he marched into my room one day and he said, you're coming with me. Because the courts didn't do enough. Punishment wasn't enough. We're going to go to that house and we're going to go to those people and we're going to go to that family and you're going to make it right. Because what I did stole from my relationship with my dad. Now, you could never look at me. I've done somewhere. How could you? And sadly, sadly, ripped from my life and I lost him as a teenager and I never I never got to thank him I never got to turn around hey dad thanks for loving me when I betrayed you, when I damaged and hurt and brought a reproach upon your name, when I should have stood for what you stood for, all that you did for me and the sacrifices that you made for me. And I turned and I felt hindered by that love. And what I wouldn't give right now to make it right with my dad. How much more those of you who are redeemed, blood-bought, saved from stuff only you know about. You got an opportunity today to run the thief out of your life and let your daddy know I'm coming home and I ain't leaving. I allow you. I give you the keys. Walk up and down the halls of my life. My heart, mom. I got a thief that I need run off. I got an enemy that I need taken care of. I'm going to give you a verse that I want you to remember. I want to give you something to remember. You have to know what to do with thief when you catch the thief. You got to know what to do with him. <laughs> We're given a concept. We're given a precept. We're given a principle in Proverbs. The thief has to do something if he gets caught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, I saw this little the other day came across my feed and it showed this guy had this marine come home for Christmas 
the neighbor didn't know that he was home because, well, there's no car there to broadcast his presence. And so he's just hanging out in the house and the family all went, I guess, Christmas shopping, whatever. And all of a sudden, I don't know, he heard a sound or something happened. However, it went out. There was a thief in the house. <laughs> well, in the words of the Marine, I subdued him. The Bible lets us know in Proverbs 6 and verse 31. But if he, the thief, be found, he shall restore. <laughs> Sevenfold. Oh. He shall, this is important. This is important. He shall give all the substance of his house. See, Stanley Carter had to give back all the things he took. Devil. I want my lost family members back. You got to give them up. I don't want just my stuff back. I want you to give their stuff back. I want their family restored. I want that marriage restored. I want that child restored. I want that child out of drugs. I want that family member out of alcohol. I want to see my neighbors get... Oh, there ought to be something about us getting back in the presence of God. We can start demanding the thief. You're going to give all that stuff back. You got to give it all back. Uh-huh. Now, we suffer from something else today, too. They, they, they got a name for them now. Anybody got Amazon delivering stuff to your house? Wait a minute. We got an Amazon delivery man in the house. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. I got kind of excited every time I got close to home. Come pulling in, I look over there. Package, right? Walk in the house if someone else is ahead of me. I look, a little stack right there, a little stack right there. But sometimes the gifts never make it in the house. They got this thing they recall running around like little little porch pirates. Porch pirate. Don't let a porch pirate steal this message before you get it home. Don't you let the enemy come in and talk, just play it off like, oh, that's just Brother Crow. Don't, don't let him turn around and say, ah, don't let him steal this seed out of your soul. Oh, devil, you're a lie. I'm going to hold on to this. Uh, I, someone let that cat out of the bag. The thief ain't going to walk in my house. Not only am I going to catch him and get him out, I'm getting all my stuff back and my family's stuff back. I'm going to become an amazing, powerful move of God in and of myself. Simply start renewing your personal dedication. Build again the broken altars. Mm -hmm. As we celebrate the birth of Christ and look forward to the new year. Why don't each and every one of us purpose in our heart, I'm going to restore back some things that have been lost. Some things that I've allowed to disappear. And I'm going to get closer to God than I've ever been before. I want to fill my heart and my life with the things of God. Now, I don't know if you feel this way. I get excited when church is coming. And I'm going to tell you something. I, look, I'm not a machine. I got to deal with this too. There were times, there's time, oh man. And I realized my flesh is gaining and my spirit is waning. It's kind of like that relationship with that awesome wife I got. We let dumb stuff get in the middle of us. We forget why we're us. Sometimes we forget why we're an us. 
As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What gets in the middle of that is a thief. So as we celebrate Christmas and go into a new year, I'm going to get a brand new restored me. I'm going to run the devil out of the nooks and the crannies and the little closets and cupboards and all those little places where I, he ain't going to get a space. He's not going to get a speck, a spot, a room, or any territory. I'm not even going to let even in little sin. Uh-huh. Sometimes we think there's colored lies. Oh, it's just a white lie. Lie, dog, a lie is a lie is a lie. I don't care what color you color it. And a sin is a sin is a sin. No matter how you justify it. We, we've been called to be powerful for God, right? Let's get the enemy out. Let's get that Trojan horse out. Let's do something amazing for God and make 2021 the best year we've ever had. Amen? It ain't what the devil's doing. It's what the church is doing. Amen. Praise God.